A few weeks ago, I was perusing around the internet, trying to figure out a Christmas gift for our next-door neighbor. I considered refurbishing a Game Boy for him, but I thought that might be a bit tacky with it being used and all. Not to mention, Game Boy prices are super steep now, even for broken ones. But you know what's not steep? These fake Game Boy-like things that I see plastered all over eBay. So I found myself the cheapest one that I could, and ordered one, and a second one, for myself, because I like gadgets. Hey guys, welcome back. You are seeing this video after Christmas since I filmed it on Christmas Eve day. I bought these on eBay. Um, the item listing is now changed to some USB wall chargers for some reason, but um, they were stuck in the mail for like three weeks because the post office is so backed up from the holiday rush. Speaking of which, thank you to all of the US Postal, UPS, FedEx, DHL, and all the other mail carrier workers out there for working so hard this season so that we can all have our Christmas gifts on time. We appreciate you all so much. At any rate, uh, when I got these, one box was crushed and the other one is nice and clean. So I'll take the crushed one and set aside the other one for the neighbor's gift. So this is apparently called the Retro FC Plus, 168 in one plus. Um, FC stands for Famicom, I imagine, which is Family Computer. Um, the Nintendo NES was released as the Famicom, so I'm assuming this is just kind of playing off of that. That's a complete guess. Uh, here is what the box includes, the digital game system itself, 3-inch super wide LCD, the console is slim, portable, and trendy, you can plug it into the TV, it has a powerful rechargeable battery pack, it includes an AC adapter, and it apparently lasts for six hours uh, on battery. I am sure it does, you optimistic little box. Let's just get this thing open, shall we? So here we are. And let's get this thing out of the bag. Hmm. That actually looks really nice in a neat little package. So actually, I did open this up a little bit just to glance at it before filming this, but I'm actually surprised at how small this system is. Compared to an original Game Boy, it's significantly smaller. Huh, maybe it actually is pocket-sized. Here it is compared to a Game Boy Color. It's smaller still. Hmm. And thickness, a little bit thinner too. So I paid $13 each for these systems. Um, that's a little over $26 and change, but I've seen these things for as much as $30 or more on eBay. So as you can see, I bought the clear white system. Uh, I really like how it looks. I thought it looked really cool. You could see the PCB inside um, and what's going on. And I just really thought it looked so much cooler than the solid colored ones, um, especially because it doesn't have SUP plastered across the front. Thankfully, they have these clear shelled ones. Now, at first hold, it doesn't feel super cheap. Like, it creaks a little bit, but it is super light. It is very light, though, as I said, it's pretty rigid. Um, the buttons are not cheap, clicky tactile switches. Um, it does seem to have actual rubber button membrane uh, buttons inside like actual Game Boys do, so it's kind of squishy, um, which I much prefer over the clicky buttons. It has a start and select button, A, B, X, Y, D-pad, and then it's got this little uh, reset button at the center, kind of a, a home button of sorts. This one, it is clicky. It doesn't bug me a whole lot because you don't really use this button really at all unless you want to reset the system and go back to the main menu. I would say overall the buttons feel good, just not great. So we've also got the LCD here, which is a three inch backlit LCD. I actually, I think it's, uh, I measured it before and it's about 3.3 inches, uh, which is kind of the standard size for these smaller screens. Uh, it's also got a volume wheel on the side. It's got an AV out. Uh, jack on the top so you can plug in a video adapter cable to go to your TV. You've got a USB charging port which there's no data lines connected. It doesn't chime when you plug into a PC. Um, it doesn't register as a USB device. It is just power lines connected only. And then it's got the power switch right here. So there is a red light that turns on right here when charging. Uh, so you plug it in via uh, USB via the cable that it comes with. 
which actually let's even take a look at that. I forgot to go through, forgot to go through these. Um, it's got the manual that it comes with, but it also comes with a USB cable and a AV out cable. So it's got the little, I think it's actually a 2.5 millimeter plug, uh, right there. And then to audio and then video. On the back of the system is the battery compartment. It's got just a cheap, generic, old cell phone battery, it looks like. Uh, this is actually, I think it's a thousand milliamp hours. Um, I think it was advertised as being a thousand or 1200 milliamp hour battery and just plugs in and has the little battery cover like that. So let's turn this thing on now and see what we've gotten ourselves into. Oh. That's annoying. <laughs> I'm gonna turn that off for now. So you can choose on the language screen here, camera focus. You can choose either English or Chinese for the language. We're going to choose English. Oh yeah, start button. So the field of view on the screen is a little strange. Uh, like I said before, I think this is a recycled LCD from an old cell phone. If you look at it this way, you can't really see what you're doing. But if you look at it from down here or up here or from this side, you can see pretty well what's going on, but I think it was intended to be oriented this way, vertically. The title screen is also very annoying. Uh, why can't they just not have music? I, I don't understand their, des their design choices for these things. So let's look at the games that this system comes with. Now, it apparently has 168 games on it, and for the most part, from what I've seen, it is pretty much telling the truth. From what I can see, it, there are 168 individual entries on this system. Uh, it has Contra, it has Double Dragon 2, it doesn't have the original Double Dragon, and it has, let's see here, the Mario games, Super Mario Brothers, and Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario Brothers 6, Super Mario, wait, what was that? Super Mario 14? Oh, it has Ninja Gaiden! Not the first one, but it at least has the second and third one on it. And apparently it has a Plants vs. Zombies game on here, too. It looks like the popular games are up top, and then it sorts the rest by alphabetical order. So all of the popular ones are like in the top 50, as far as I can tell. Now, as far as the quality of the games on the system goes, they're mostly NES games. I think they're all NES games, um, and a lot of them are patched and rebranded, so they've got different characters and different sprites in them. Um, there seems to be a lot of junk on here, but there are a few decent games on here that make the system kind of worth it, in my humble opinion. And also, from what I've seen, there doesn't seem to be any duplicates in this list. I haven't looked super closely, but I haven't seen very many repeats. Now, when playing games on this system, there is a bit of artifacting on the screen, and that's pretty typical of NES games, but I, I don't remember it ever being as bad as it is on this system. Also, the color in some of these games is kind of washed out and really off, so it's not a one-to-one -one identical experience as you would have playing these games on original hardware. Sound quality is typical for a cheap system like this. It sounds tinny, but it's not as bad as you might expect one of these consoles to sound. The system is definitely very playable, and so here is just a short montage of me playing some games on here. Let's go ahead and take this thing apart now and see what's inside. There are five Phillips screws in the back. One, two, three, four, five. There's nothing underneath the battery compartment, um, but we should probably take that out anyways, just to be safe. 
So let me grab my screwdriver here. So there's the back of the shell. And looks like there's one screw holding the board in. And lift this out carefully. There is everything. That is a very simple looking setup. So I don't know for sure. I believe that the logic is probably underneath the black blob here and then memory RAM is uh, right there. And then there is the crystal for the clock. And these are just rubber pads, uh, foam pads actually, that hold the LCD up. Little speaker right here, very cheap speaker. What is that, is that an eight ohm? Doesn't even say. So that's the cheapest speaker in the world. And there's just the little contacts for where the rubber membranes, I was right, it's just rubber membranes that the buttons press down on that complete the circuit for pressing one of these buttons on the board. Now in Game Boy's buttons are separate. In here, the buttons are all one piece. Looks like there is a bit of dried leftover flux residue on these contacts here. That looks like super cheap flux that they used on here. I actually found a version number. This looks like it's the Retro FC version 3.5. Made in 2018. And it looks like that's it. That's all that there is to this thing. Just a screen, some buttons, one board with everything on it. Just a single layer PCB? Is that it, really? Volume wheel connects via through hole connector to the front. Yeah, that's just a single layer PCB. There's nothing crazy going on here on this board. Let's get this back together and put it back in the shell. So here's my final thoughts about this. This is actually a really neat little thing to hold in your hands and play on. I would have no qualms about giving one of these as a white elephant gift. Um, I thought I was really going to load this thing, but for 13 bucks, it's actually really neat and gives some value, though it's pretty silly. Now, there is the part about these games being pirated. To the Game Boy connoisseur, if you will, this cheap knockoff would be enough to make anyone gag. But to gadget junkies like me, honestly, I think it's pretty neat. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about this thing. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Hit like if you like this video and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. As always, you all stay awesome and I'll see you in my next video.